What's up, y'all? I don't want to tell y'all how to sat him recorded a whole video with no audio. Like, nothing. Like, there, there's just there's no audio at all. I had the mute button clicked on this microphone here. So, yeah. Here we go again. So, are Sony A7S III and Turn Codex trash? That's what we're gonna find out in today's video. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna break this up into two segments. One is gonna be ProRes RAW versus HI264 All I, and then we're just gonna do ProRes HQ versus HI265. And what I wanna do is, I just wanna see if you all see the difference, but we're gonna break them up into sections. So, the first section we're gonna do is ProRes HQ versus HI265. I just wanna see if, if you all see the difference in between which file is which. And what I want y'all to do is, I'm gonna see how good y'all, I want you to comment down below. Which file was ProRes, which file was HI265. But before we get started, for all my OGs in the building, y'all know the drill, man. Y'all already know I'm gonna drop some gems. Go ahead and give your boy a thumbs up now. For all my newcomers, just go ahead and get a thumbs up. Just show support, cause I mean, it's, it's gonna be a good video. I mean, I'm eating. <laughs> So what were your thoughts? Which file was which? Was file A ProRes HQ and was file B H.265? If those are your answers, you are incorrect. So just like you all, I was kind of under the kind of under the assumption that having more data kind of like meant more better quality, which is not the case. More data does mean exactly what it means, just more data. So what that does mean though, like if you're shooting something like sports, where it's like NASCAR, basketball, boxing, hockey, anything like that, with just something where there's like a lot of fast moving action, you have more data in that clip. So when you're panning, the image will hold together a lot better than something like an internal Kodak. But honestly, you know, I think that's more so compared to like an H.264 clip because H.265 actually handles fast moving objects pretty well in comparison to something like h264 but the, also the reverse can be said with all i because it's capturing individual pictures itself like it's capturing every single frame frame by frame also probably something that you've also noticed is that you're like man sean like i can see that the prores actually does like have a quote unquote a sharper image and that my friends is what we call an illusion and that is an illusion based off of contrast prime example looking at this reindeer like, as you can see you would automatically think the reindeer is sharper but as you can see it is not it's just more so just the contrast that has tricked you. By contrast, making us like like some of the darker areas seem quote unquote darker. It's giving you the it's giving you the idea that hey, this is a sharper image. But with a couple of tweaks, as you can see, I'm able to get the internal file looking just like the ProRes file. I don't know why the ProRes file has more contrast than the internal cameras, but nonetheless, it does. But there was a quick there was a couple of easy tweaks. Also, this is why I don't be giving a shit about color science. Like, you see how easy it is to like manipulate your footage? So you telling me Canon cameras is like that much better because you cancel out your goddamn magenta shift? Stop it, B. Now we're gonna move on to ProRes RAW versus All I. Same thing, we're gonna see which file was which. You let me know. Did you get these right? Which one did you pick? Was file A ProRes RAW and file B H.264? If those are your answers, you are correct. Now, I didn't do any corrections to the raw footage itself. For those who are having experience eye looking at raw codex, you probably noticed that like there was more noise, the lens distortion, stuff like that, right? But also, what you probably didn't notice is the color shift. Now, going back all the way back to DP Journey, I don't know what it is about ProRes RAW, but the ProRes RAW that's coming out of A7S3 is different than what the internal A7S3 codex look like. There's definitely a shift in the colors and the greens, but also keep in mind when you are using raw codex, you also have to, you know, make sure that you do the lens distortion treatment, also control the noise. And then again, if you're using the Sony A7S3 with RAW, you're gonna have to use a corrective LUTs that DP Journey made. And I'll make, sure I, I'll make sure I'll link you to his channel to go get those LUTs if you decide to use RAW. But to me, I don't know if it's worth the hassle because if I'm shooting like an interview or something like that, right, and I got two of the same cameras, both my A7S3s, right? And I got the same exact size, the same exact white balance, but I'm looking like, man, why my greens and reds are looking a little bit off on this camera? 
but on this camera they're looking like a little you know they're looking different especially if they had the exact same settings so to me i don't really think you know it's worth it kind of shooting raw you know what i mean and honestly higher codecs for that for that matter in general more data does not equal more resolution you feel what i'm saying so it's not like just because i have a raw a raw file that i can't i cannot manipulate the colors like i see fit from like an all eye codec or h.265 codec to be honest like the way i shoot my stuff i shoot my stuff to have the accurate colors correct exposures so i don't have to do that much heavy manipulation why i need a raw faster to even change something like as simple as white balance never in my day have i shot something so often white balance i'm like damn i wish i had raw to fix this like what the hell are you shooting bro also too for those who say like yeah sometimes my client wants internal raw and stuff like that listen none of my clients personally we sit here ask for raw and the ones that did i tell them you don't need that shit. And they be like, yeah, you probably right because you're the professional. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna listen to you and take your word anyway. But at the end of the day, I'm not the one who's paying you. So if your client said they need raw, then they need raw. But just know what comes with that. There's definitely a more of a workflow using raw and versus to something using like internal codecs. So keep that in mind. So are the Sony A7S III codecs trash? No, they are not. For for what 90% of us do, at least the ones that follow my channel and most of y'all watching YouTube, that shit good enough be like i promise you you're not you're not doing stuff that much where you, where you need that much more data or if you just don't know how to expose your image correctly then you have other troubles that you need to focus on other than what a raw codec can do for you but i am curious man like for those who have an ninja v and an a7s3 let me know what your testings are man and to do that make sure you follow me on ig at brooks media that's brooks media with two s's if you want to add the s you ain't spelling it right deuces